Hey everyone, welcome to our deep dive into the evolution of handheld consoles. In this video, we'll explore the iconic handhelds released between 1989 and 2024, from the legendary Game Boy to the groundbreaking Nintendo Switch. We'll look at their hardware specs, their impact on gaming, and some facts you might not know. Plus, we'll compare their performance to the Game Boy, which we'll use as our baseline. Let's get started. Our journey begins in 1989 with the Nintendo Game Boy. This 8-bit handheld was powered by a custom sharp LR35902 CPU running at 4.19 MHz. The Game Boy's CPU was based on the Z-Log Z80 architecture, but with custom modifications to optimize it for gaming. The Game Boy's power consumption was incredibly low, allowing it to run for up to 30 hours on just 4 AA batteries, a feat unmatched by its competitors. It featured a link cable port that allowed two players to connect and play together, a feature that was heavily used in games like Tetris and Pokemon. The iconic Tetris bundle was a last minute decision by Nintendo, and it became one of the best selling games of all time, helping the Game Boy dominate the market. Over the years, it evolved into sleeker models like the Game Boy Pocket and the Game Boy Lite, each adding new features while keeping the charm of the original. During the Gulf War, Game Boys were used by soldiers to pass the time, and some units even survived explosions, earning the device a reputation for durability. Next up is the Atari Lynx, the first handheld with a color LCD screen. It was powered by a VL65 NC02 8-bit CPU, running at 4 MHz. The Lynx featured a custom graphics 16-bit CMOS chip called the Suzy chip, which supported hardware scaling and rotation, allowing for pseudo 3D effects. The Lynx had a unique feature where you could flip the screen for left-handed players, making it one of the most ergonomic handhelds of its era. The Lynx was one of the first handhelds to support multiplayer gaming via a serial cable called Comlynx. Up to eight players could connect their Lynx consoles and play games together, a feature that was ahead of its time. Its successor, the Lynx 2, launched in 1991, slimmed down the design, improved battery life, and added a much needed screen protector, making it a more polished version of the original. Despite its advanced features, the Lynx struggled to compete with the Game Boy due to its high price, $179 at launch, and short battery life. Atari planned to release a TV tuner accessory for the Lynx, which would have allowed users to watch television on the go. However, this accessory was never officially released and only a few prototypes exist today. Sega's Game Gear was a direct competitor to the Game Boy, featuring a full-color backlit screen and a Z-Log Z80 CPU running at 3.58 MHz. The Game Gear was essentially a portable Sega Master System, as it used the same Z80 CPU and could even play Master System games with an adapter. The Game Gear had a TV tuner accessory, allowing it to function as a portable television, a feature that was quite innovative for its time. It also supported a wide range of accessories, including a magnifying screen and a battery pack to enhance the gaming experience. Sega positioned the Game Gear as a more advanced and cooler alternative to the Game Boy, emphasizing its color screen and backlight, which the Game Boy lacked. Despite its power-hungry design, the Game Gear was a hit among gamers who wanted a color screen and more advanced graphics. The Turbo Express was a portable version of the Turbo Graphics 16 console, powered by a Hue C6280 CPU running at 7.16 MHz, making it one of the most advanced handhelds of its era. The Turbo Express featured a high-resolution screen with 400 by 270 pixels, making it one of the sharpest displays of its time. It used the same Hue card format as the Turbo Graphics 16, making it fully compatible with the console's game library. The Turbo Express was so expensive at launch, $249.99 that it was often called the Rolls-Royce of handhelds. Despite its advanced features, the Turbo Express struggled to gain popularity due to its high price and limited game library. The Sega Nomad was powered by a Motorola 68000 CPU running at 7.67 MHz, the same CPU used in the Sega Genesis. The Nomad was essentially a portable Sega Genesis, as it used the same hardware and could play all Genesis games. It was one of the first handhelds to support full-color graphics and console-quality games. Despite its innovative design, the Nomad was a commercial failure due to its high price and short battery life. The handheld is now a sought-after collector's item, with its unique design and functionality making it a favorite among retro gaming enthusiasts. The Game Boy Color was powered by the same Sharp LR35902 CPU as the original Game Boy, but with a higher clock speed of 8 MHz. It featured a 15-bit TFT LCD screen, a massive improvement over the original Game Boy's monochrome display. It was backward compatible with original Game Boy games thanks to its similar hardware architecture. In addition, it could add color to them, even if they weren't specifically designed for the GBC. The Game Boy Color introduced infrared communication, allowing players to trade Pokemon without a cable. The Game Boy Color was officially discontinued in 2003, four years after the release of the Game Boy Advance. Despite its relatively short lifespan, the GBC sold over 50 million units worldwide, making it one of the most successful handheld consoles of its time. 
SNK's Neo Geo Pocket was powered by a Toshiba TLCS 900H CPU running at 6 MHz, and a Zilog Z80 is used for sound processing. The Neo Geo Pocket featured a unique clicky joystick, which was praised for its precision and durability. It was one of the first handhelds to use a monochrome screen with a high refresh rate, making it ideal for fast-paced games. The Neo Geo Pocket had a built-in link cable port for multiplayer gaming, which was used in games like King of Fighters. Despite its popularity in Japan, the Neo Geo Pocket struggled in Western markets due to limited marketing and competition from the Game Boy Color. SNK released a color version of the Neo Geo Pocket in 1999, but it was too late to compete with the Game Boy Advance. Designed by Gunpei Yokoi, the Bandai Wonderswan was powered by an NEC V30MZ CPU running at 3.72 MHz. The Wonderswan was one of the first handhelds to support both horizontal and vertical gameplay, thanks to its unique button layout. The Wonderswan used a low-power FSTN LCD screen, which was less taxing on the battery compared to other handhelds of its time. It was also one of the first handhelds to feature a built-in clock, which was used in games like Final Fantasy to track in-game time. The Wonderswan was so popular in Japan that it even outsold the Game Boy Color for a brief period. It was designed to be affordable, costing just $40 at launch, which helped it gain a strong following in Japan. The Wonderswan was the last project of Gunpei Yokoi, the creator of the Game Boy, before his untimely death in 1997. The Game Boy Advance marked a huge leap forward, featuring a 32-bit ARM7 TDMI CPU running at 16.78 MHz, improved graphics, and better sound capabilities. Even though the GBA didn't have a dedicated 3D GPU, some games used software rendering to simulate real 3D graphics. One of the most unique features of the GBA was its ability to connect to the Nintendo GameCube using a special link cable. This feature foreshadowed the Nintendo Switch's hybrid concept, but it was underutilized by most developers. The original GBA lacked a backlight, making it difficult to play in low-light conditions. In 2003, the Game Boy Advance SP introduced a front-lit screen, a first for Nintendo handhelds. The later GBA SP AGS 101 had a true backlit screen, offering better brightness and color clarity. Nokia's Engage was a unique combination of a gaming handheld and a mobile phone, powered by an Aram 920T CPU running at 104 MHz. The Engage used MMC cards for storage, which were a precursor to modern SD cards. It featured Bluetooth connectivity, allowing players to compete in multiplayer games wirelessly. It was infamous for its taco phone design, which required users to hold it sideways to make calls. Despite its flaws, the Engage had a loyal fan base and even received a second version, the Engage QD. The Engage was ahead of its time in terms of connectivity, but it ultimately failed to compete with dedicated gaming handhelds. The Nintendo DS revolutionized handheld gaming with its dual screens, touch controls, and innovative games. The DS was powered by dual CPUs, an ARM 946ES running at 67 megahertz and an ARM 7 TDMI running at 33 megahertz. It featured a built-in microphone, which was used in games like Nintendogs and Brain Age. The Nintendo DS family began with the original model in 2004, which was a bit chunky and not the prettiest, but it paved the way for the sleek DS Lite in 2006, the camera-equipped DSi in 2008, and the larger DSi XL in 2009, each adding new features and refining the design. It was originally designed as a third pillar alongside the Game Boy and GameCube, but it eventually replaced the Game Boy line entirely. The DS is the best-selling handheld console of all time, with over 154 million units sold. Sony's PSP brought console-quality gaming to handhelds with stunning graphics and multimedia features. It was powered by a MIPS R4000 CPU running at 333 MHz, paired with a custom GPU called the Media Engine. The PSP was the first handheld to use optical discs, called UMDs, which could store up to 1.8 GB of data. The PSP's multimedia capabilities were so advanced that it could even function as a portable media player, playing MP3s and videos. Sony released a wide range of accessories for the PSP, including a GPS module and a camera attachment. The following years, Sony released refresh models. The lighter, slimmer PSP 2000, the PSP 3000 with a brighter screen and a built-in mic, and the PSP Go featured a sliding design without a UMD drive. In 2011, they released the PSP Street, which was a budget model. Despite its success, the PSP struggled to compete with the DS in terms of sales, but it remains a beloved device among retro gaming enthusiasts. The Gizmondo was a British handheld that aimed to compete with the PSP and DS. It was powered by an ARM 920T CPU running at 400 MHz, paired with an NVIDIA GoForce 4500 GPU. It used Windows CE as its operating system, which allowed developers to port PC games to the handheld. The Gizmondo was one of the first handhelds to feature GPS and a camera making it a multimedia powerhouse. The Gizmondo was developed by a Swedish company, and its launch was marred by controversy due to its ties to organized crime. Despite its advanced features, the Gizmondo was a commercial failure, 
selling less than 25,000 units overall, making it the worst selling handheld console ever. The Nintendo 3DS introduced glasses-free 3D gaming, along with augmented reality features. It was powered by an RM11 MP core CPU running at 268 MHz paired with an RM9 CPU for backward compatibility. The 3DS had a built-in dual camera, allowing players to take 3D photos and use augmented reality features. The 3DS initially struggled but became a success after a massive price cut. Over time, it evolved into models like the larger 3DS XL, the more affordable 2DS, and the enhanced new 3DS. It was an upgraded version of the 3DS with improved hardware and new features. The new 3DS introduced a second analog stick called the C-Stick and improved 3D tracking. It also featured a faster CPU and more RAM, making it capable of running more demanding games like Xenoblade Chronicles 3D. Sony's PS Vita was a powerhouse with a quad-core CPU, OLED screen, and dual analog sticks. The handheld was powered by an ARM Cortex-A9 MP core CPU running at 2 GHz paired with a PowerVR SGX543 MP4 Plus GPU. The Vita had a built-in rear touchpad, which was used in games like Tearaway to create unique gameplay experiences. It also supported remote play, allowing players to stream games from their PlayStation 4 to the Vita. Despite its impressive specs, the Vita struggled due to high game prices and lack of first-party support. The Vita's OLED screen was praised for its vibrant colors, but it was later replaced with an LCD screen in the slim model to reduce costs. The Nintendo Switch redefined gaming by combining handheld and console experiences. It is powered by an NVIDIA Tegra X1 CPU running at 1.02 GHz, paired with a Maxwell-based GPU. The Switch's design was heavily influenced by feedback from Wii U owners, who wanted a more portable and versatile gaming experience. The Switch's modular design in games like The Legend of Zelda Breath of the Wild made it an instant hit, selling over 130 million units. In 2021, Nintendo released the Switch OLED, improved upon the original Switch with a larger, vibrant OLED screen. It features a wider kickstand and improved audio, making it ideal for tabletop gaming. And that's our journey through the evolution of handheld consoles. From the original Game Boy to the Nintendo Switch, these devices have shaped the way we play games on the go. Which one is your favorite? Let us know in the comments below. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and hit the bell icon for more content. Thanks for watching, and we'll see you in the next video.